the new, new Microsoft Whiteboard is out. Yesterday I was teaching a class, I went to open up Microsoft Whiteboard because I use the tool all the time, and the new version that's been advertised as coming soon is there on my screen. Now the question is, did Microsoft listen to some of our feedback that we gave them about the new version, some of the features that we felt were missing that we really liked in the old version, and which was actually the reason that they rolled back to the old version for a period of time? Well, spoiler alert, the answer is yes. Microsoft did listen to a lot of our feedback, and I'm going to show you where we can get all of the features that we had in the old Microsoft Whiteboard and use them in the new, new Microsoft Whiteboard. There are a couple of features that are still coming soon, and there's one feature, specifically the eraser, that I would still like to see some evolution on, but it is evident that Microsoft has been listening. Let's go take a look at the new, new Microsoft Whiteboard. The new version of Microsoft Whiteboard has included many of the features that we were asking for in the new version. We had a lot of features in the old version that we really liked, and as anybody who's been watching the channel for a while knows, when Microsoft came out with the new version of the Microsoft Whiteboard, I was really saying, you know what, I didn't like it. There's a lot of features that were missing that I really needed, and Microsoft, to their credit, actually contacted me, and we had a conversation about what were some of those features that I really wanted. Well, the new Microsoft Whiteboard obviously demonstrates that they were listening to what I said, because a lot of this stuff that they put into this new version is directly related to some of the feedback that we discussed during our meeting. And I'll show you, because some of it's not as obvious, we have a new interface, and any new interface means a little bit of a new learning curve, but the question is, are the features that I need in order to use this tool there? And the answer is, many of them are. There are a couple areas where I'd like to see, uh, you know, some improvements, but we'll talk about those throughout the video. First of all, let's take a look at the new Microsoft Whiteboard. I have the standard things, I have the ability to select, I have my inking menu, so if you notice, it'll hide my pens or it'll bring my pens back up. I'm able to go into the create menu, I can hide it, I can bring it back, so the create menu is, is hideable. Now, let's go through first of all the pens. If I take a look at the pens, you know, I have three different pens that I can choose from, but it's not really three different pens. If I click on it, I have a huge number of uh, pens that I can select in terms of all these colors are available to me. I can change the thickness of the pen. I can choose to have either single or double arrowheads on the pen. So this really gives me all of the pens that I'm going to need. It does mean in some cases, rather than have five pens across the top, I only have three. I can live with that 100% because I can just quickly go in here, click on the pen, choose a different color, draw with that color, quickly choose the pen, choose another color, draw with that color. In my case, when I'm teaching, generally what I'll do is I'll have a black pen as, you know, always have that there available for me. And then I'll have a couple of other pens where I swap colors quite a bit. I have the highlighter, same idea here. I can click on the highlighter, choose thickness, plus a bunch of different colors that I can have. And then the eraser, that's an area where it's, it's okay, but I'm not 100% happy with the eraser in the new whiteboard. If I click on the eraser, notice that I can erase the dots that I put on there. But let's say I go in here and I want to erase a portion of this line. You can't do it. It erases the entire uh, diagram or entire inking experience for that, for that particular uh, motion that I did. So if I draw a partial circle and a well, I'm not, it's not a circle. If I draw two crazy shapes, when I use the eraser, it'll erase the entire ink flow from that particular stroke that I did there. Now, this is unlike some of the other Microsoft products. So, for example, if I take something like OneNote and I go to the drawing option in OneNote, so I'll go ahead and I'll draw something, you know, if I'm taking a note here, one of the things that I really like here is that when I go to the eraser in the OneNote environment, I have different types of erasers. I have a small eraser, medium eraser, large eraser, but I also have a stroke eraser. So if I do a small eraser and I go to erase, notice that it takes out a portion of what I drew. And if I do the stroke eraser, that will take out the entire stroke of what I did. So what's happening here is in the whiteboard, where the default and only option is a stroke eraser. So I am hoping that they will put the option to have 
have a small, medium and large eraser in there. So again, Microsoft, if you're listening, you, you did such a great job of listening to the feedback from the first iteration of this product. Uh, hopefully you're listening to this feedback as well. Here's an example of feedback that's been listened to, the ruler that's going to be coming soon. That was a product that a lot of the viewers on the channel really said, look, I need a ruler, have to have a ruler. I'm teaching math, I'm teaching uh, geometry. I get that. So the ruler hopefully will come back. Uh, one of the things that I did notice that at first I didn't notice, it's a little bit subtle here, but if I go in and I draw some objects in here, so I'll just draw a square in here. Again, I can go in here and I can choose in terms of the, the shape here to enhance the shape. And if I choose to enhance the shape and I draw a square, so I'll draw a square here. When I enhance the shape, it'll actually conform to the square shape. Same would be like if I drew a triangle here, the enhance feature will allow me to have it automatically uh, click to that shape as opposed to my horrible you know, rectangle here. So I often use that. Uh, but one of the things that I really noticed here is down in the corner, we actually have that zoom feature. So I can use my center mouse wheel and look at that. I see exactly how I'm zoomed in, how far I'm zoomed in. I know it seems like a minor thing, but to me, that was a major feature. So it was really, really important for me to have that zoom so that I could have a perspective of, you know, where I am on the board. So thank you, Microsoft. Definitely listen to the feedback on that. The other thing that was really useful here, and I'm just going to go ahead and clean up a little bit. I'll just go ahead and put the lasso around everything and I'll go ahead and clean that up. The other feature that we had, and they incorporated this quite early on, were things like copy paste. So if I go in and I take a note here, so I'll just put a simple note on here, I can actually copy this note. I can right click and I can paste that note in there. You'll also notice that I can go in and edit text on that note. I can go in and I can um, edit the alt text on that note. I can send it back in front. I can lock it into a specific place on the whiteboard. Thank you very much. The other thing is notice here, we can have reactions right here on the note itself. Previously, what we had to do is choose one of the reactions here, which we can still do. So I gave it a thumbs up and then I have to put the thumbs up on there. But look at this, we can go here and we do the thumbs up. Uh, so I cannot stress enough that definitely Microsoft was listening to the feedback that I gave them in the meeting that we had, because all of these are features that I was, to be blunt, pretty, honest about wanting in the in the whiteboard. So we go in here. Uh, the other thing that we have here is under images. Now, if we go to images before we would only be able to pull images from our device, they put back the Bing search. So now if I go into the Bing image search here, uh, notice it's a coming soon feature, but that's indicative of the fact that they recognize that we need to be able to go out and search for images. So they are going to be bringing that Bing image search back to the whiteboard very useful. One of the features that a lot of people, a lot of my viewers were looking for was documents. So underneath documents, you notice I can bring in a PDF or a PowerPoint document into my whiteboard. There are a couple of caveats to this. So the first caveat is that this is actually going to go to my SharePoint site. So you can see these are teams that I have in my SharePoint environment. And if I go to my files, this is actually my OneDrive. So I can see my OneDrive here. So if I want a local file, like a local PDF document, I have to go to the ellipse here and I can upload a local folder or local files. That means that I might have to do a little prep before I'm teaching. It's a little less organic, but I could say, look, here's a folder of all of the PDF documents that I use for teaching science or for teaching a specific subject. And then what I can do is I can load that onto my OneDrive and I should probably do that anyway so that it's available to me everywhere. But I really do like that. So you can upload that or create new folders and such. In my case, I actually did this. I, I went and uploaded a PDF on here so I could demonstrate it to you. So we'll go down here. I have a lot of documents on my folder here. Now I have to find it. I have to keep scrolling down because I put it, I didn't put it in a folder, so I'll just select it. And now I can select that PDF document. This happens to be a PDF document from uh, uh, MindJet Mind Manager. I do mind mapping and it's a whole bunch of different pages. So I'll just grab one of the pages there. I'll insert that page. And now I have this document in here that I can now go in and I can do things like 
you know, highlight areas. I can circle. Notice it conformed to a nice ellipse shape because I've got that uh, enhance ink shapes on there. I can go in and highlight different areas, make notes and such. So I really do like that. Here's another challenge though. Some viewers have indicated to me that they're not seeing the document icon on here. The reason for that is not because of the functionality of the Microsoft whiteboard. It's the settings for your, from your IT administrator. So I'm currently logged in with an account from my Microsoft 365 account that I have full administrative control of. So I give myself permission to connect to my OneDrive with Microsoft Whiteboard. If you're in a school environment, you may have this disabled, in which case you won't see this documents icon. That's, uh, that's a, something you'll need to talk to your IT department about. In my case, I am my IT department, but when I log in using my academic credentials, I actually don't see this documents icon. That threw me for a bit of a loop for a while there. Then we have a bunch of other things in here, shapes and templates. And I have another video on the channel where I introduce you to the Microsoft whiteboard. And I'm going to do a more comprehensive um, a video on using the new Microsoft whiteboard. This is more of a Microsoft listened look at the features they did give us. So we can see that we're, we have a few things that are still coming. For, the, for example, the Bing image search. We have one thing that I hope that they'll eventually make it coming soon, and that is having a small, medium, large, as well as the stroke eraser. Uh, the a ruler is coming soon. The use of documents and the ability to bring documents in, PowerPoints and, and PDFs, that's in there as well. And we have the zoom feature that's in there. So these are a lot of the things that I really needed to have from the old Microsoft whiteboard. I'm looking forward to the coming soons, the ruler and the images. And I am looking forward to taking advantage of some of the features that are new to the new Microsoft whiteboard that I think are quite good. So for example, I really do like the templates. Again, one of the things I gave as feedback is I would like to be able to create my own templates and reuse them. And we will be seeing some interesting things here, I believe. If we go to sharing, you'll notice that I can go in and I can share out this whiteboard, collaborate on that whiteboard. Other things that we can do is if I go back, let's go back to the home here. You can see I have all of these different whiteboards here as well. If I go into the whiteboard that I just created, you can delete and rename it. So I'm just going to rename this one, um, you know, put a bunch of A's in there, oh, put a bunch of A's in there and I'll rename it. And then if I go to this one here and I'll rename this one underscore with a bunch of A's. So this theoretically should go in front of this one. But when I rename it, you'll notice that it still is by date. So a little bit of file management or the ability to save control and organize my whiteboards, I'd still like to see that. But overall, feedback was listened to. I really appreciate that Microsoft. Looking forward to using the new Microsoft whiteboard for the features that it currently has, for some of the new features that have been added based upon our feedback, and hopefully seeing the product evolve over a period of time. So I'd like to thank Microsoft for listening to the feedback and incorporating a lot of the things we asked for into the new, new Microsoft whiteboard. The ruler's coming soon. The Bing search is coming soon. I already commented on the eraser and how I'd like to see some changes there, but we got a lot. We got the zoom features there. We got the ability to like on a specific post. Uh, a lot of little things that in the aggregate make for a much better whiteboard experience. I'll do another tutorial later where I'll go through the entire new Microsoft whiteboard from beginning to end as a, as a complete tutorial, but I am interested in what your thoughts are. What do you think of the new, new Microsoft whiteboard? Is it heading in the right direction? Has Microsoft either introduced or is going to introduce features that will make it useful for you again? Let me know in the comments down below. Let's have a conversation about that. And be aware that Microsoft is listening. So if you have anything to say, maybe put it in the comments down below and maybe they'll listen to it and maybe we'll see that in the new, new, new micro. I'm just going to say new Microsoft whiteboard. See you in the next video. Take care.